Hi there, this is David Humes, and I wanted to thank you so much for investing in yourself with this program, Double Your Productivity Using Microsoft Outlook 2010. I know you're going to love it. I want to begin this program with seven initial productivity suggestions. Number one, have an open mind. Empty your teacup. Presumably, what you've been doing up to this point hasn't been working all that well, or you wouldn't be going through this program right now. So empty your teacup. Come to this training and all training with an open mind. The only way you can learn anything new is to empty your mind of all judgments, opinions, and preconceptions. Number two, learn from everyone. Everyone and everything is my teacher. If you don't learn what to do, you may learn what not to do. So you can learn from everyone. This program is the result of my over 10 years of teaching time management and over six years of teaching Microsoft Outlook, and I'm still learning. My intention is to continue learning for the rest of my life. We now know that if you want to live longer and be happier, then you'll join those and me in committing to lifelong learning. Number three, there is no one way to do this. So get as much information as you can and then make up your own mind. Use what works for you and eliminate what doesn't. And that's why in this program, I'm not teaching you Outlook per se. Anyone can teach Outlook. If you want to learn Outlook, get a dummies book. Most of the dummies books are very good. But not everyone can teach you how to maximize the utility of Outlook and use it as the high productivity tool that it is capable of being. That's where this program is different from any other. I'm teaching you only the stuff that you want and none of the stuff you don't want or need if your intention is to majorly improve your productivity, which I'm assuming it is because you're watching this now. Once you've gone through the entire program at least once, then you'll be better able to go back and rewatch the parts you need the most help with. Repetition is the mother of learning. I recommend going through this program multiple times, as many as necessary, so you fully understand it. Because once you fully understand it and its implications, you're going to get excited about what it can do for you in your life. So watch the entire program, read the entire study guide, and then make up your mind and use what works for you. And remember, what doesn't or won't work today may work tomorrow at your next job or career or business. That's a great benefit of DVD training. You can watch them again and again whenever and wherever you want. If you find yourself falling back into old habits of being unorganized or unproductive, you can go through the program again and again to get back on track. Number four. There are four stages to mastery. We all go through this. This is how we master anything. Stage one is unconscious incompetence, meaning you don't know that you don't know. We're all born that way. There's no sin in that. Stage two is conscious incompetence. Now you know that you don't know. And provided you don't have a huge ego about it, be like the Zen master who says, thank you for pointing out my flaws. Now I know what to work on. And that takes maturity and wisdom. When you are humble enough to realize you don't know everything and you practice, practice, practice properly for as long as it takes, you will eventually become consciously competent or conscious competence, which is stage three in the mastery process. After you practice conscious competence 
for enough hours, weeks, months, or years, you hopefully arrive at stage four, which is unconscious competence. This is where you don't think about it anymore. The muscle memory is programmed in, and you're one with the music, so to speak. If you're a musician, you might know what I'm talking about. And by the way, when you get to unconscious competence, you're not totally unconscious. You have to have some consciousness. But because you've practiced it consciously for so long, you can devote very little consciousness to doing it. This unconsciously competent state of mastery, or flow, frees you from the mechanics of doing the thing. The thing in this case is the double your productivity using Microsoft Outlook 2010 system. Once you have mastered this system, you will be freed up to devote maximum attention and energy to completing your most cherished goals and related projects and tasks. This is my hope for you, but I can't do it for you. It does take disciplined practice, but if you persevere, you will eventually become unconsciously competent and reap the benefits for the rest of your life. Number five, keyboard shortcuts, also known as quick keys. This is something you want to be unconsciously competent at as quickly as possible. And it's a lot easier than mastering playing the drums, for example. Trust me on that. It's not that much work. You can get the minimum mandatory universal keyboard shortcuts down in less than 30 minutes, worst case. Just do each one of them 20 times each while saying what it is each time and then rinse and repeat. <laughs> For example, hold down the control key with one finger and press the C key with another finger while saying out loud, control C, copy, control C, copy, control C, copy. Do that at least 20 times for each shortcut and you should have them down. If not, repeat this exercise. Begin using the keyboard shortcuts immediately in your everyday work. If you forget one, repeat the exercise until you have it down. They say, if you use quick keys for your most frequently used commands, you will increase your productivity 20 to 100% just by doing that. That's why I included the minimum mandatory universal shortcuts and Outlook shortcuts in the beginning of your guidebook. Number six, quick access toolbars. I highly recommend you customize and begin using your quick access toolbars. I have an entire section in this chapter devoted to this topic. The quick access toolbar is a small strip above or below the ribbon, your choice, where you can put your most frequently used commands as one-click shortcuts. It's very similar to customizing toolbars in Office 2003. This will save you time having to click around on multiple tabs in the ribbon to find things. You will get tremendous productivity gains from customizing and using your quick access toolbars. By the way, when I'm in high production mode, when I'm not working or training, over 90% of the time I have the ribbon minimized and I use my quick access toolbars and quick keys almost exclusively. In your guidebook, I have screen caps for you of all of my quick access toolbars with text underneath each one that tells you exactly what they are. So if you want to customize yours like I have, you can. Or not, whatever you want to do, I'm just giving you what works very well for me. Working with the ribbon minimized gives me more monitor real estate 
and allows me to be super fast, super productive using the quick access toolbars and keyboard shortcuts. I didn't produce this DVD training program to impress you with how smoking fast I am. My intention in this program is to transfer information in a way that is most beneficial and utilizable by you, the student. By training with the ribbon open, you'll be able to see where things are, so if you need them, you'll be able to find them. Once you get the system down, once you're unconsciously competent at it, then you'll get to the point where you are using mostly keyboard shortcuts and quick access toolbars and work with the ribbon minimized over 90% of the time. Number seven, I recommend not, not, not using the flagging feature or the to-do bar feature. They are both unnecessary and counterproductive. The goal of time management is to gain control of the events in our life as much as humanly possible. Flagging and the to-do bar conspire together to bring us more out of control by muddling things up. Do not use them. Turn off the to-do bars throughout Outlook by clicking on the View tab, then To-Do Bar, then select off. View tab, to do bar, off. In every module, email, calendar, contacts, notes, and tasks. Again, have an open mind. Go through the entire program first and then make up your mind. After you've done that, if you still want to use flagging or the to do bar features, then go for it. Whatever works best for you. Finally, I hope you're the exception to the rule and the stat that says most people who buy a book don't read past the first chapter. Totally blows my mind, but that's the fact. I hope you're the exception. Be the exception. Step up and be the disciplined master that you are, or that you want to become, who takes the time now to learn to study, to implement, to practice, to become unconsciously competent at these strategies to improve your life like no other and live a happy life. Welcome.